daughter just to get her started. She got fringes on it. And, um... Because what you want to do, brother, right now, your children will be considered... According to the Bible, right now, your children be, will be considered unclean because they're with their mother and they're not in order according to God's law. So it'll behoove you to have uh, righteous clothing at your house for your children. Have French shirts for your son. Have French skirts or dresses for your daughters. But I'm going to show you this according to the Bible. First Corinthians chapter 7, start at verse uh, 14. Yes, sir. Thank you, but the, but the unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife, and the unbelieving wife is sanctified by the husband. That's where your children are unclean, but now are they holy. So what the Bible is going through is the, the, uh, the sanctification between when it's somebody, a family that's keeping the commandments and a household that's not keeping the commandments. Now this right here is talking about one household with the father and the mother. The mother is sanctified by the husband and the husband is sanctified by the wife. How, is that, how, how does that be? If the husband is not keeping God's laws and the wife is, how is he sanctified through the wife that's keeping the laws? Because his love for his wife, he keeps the commandments of God. He's pleased to dwell. Pleased to dwell is when you're keeping the commandments of God. And the wife is vice versa. If she wasn't keeping the laws at first, but her husband is keeping the laws, how is she sanctified through her husband? Because she's pleased to dwell. Her pleased to dwell with her husband, and she's keeping the commandments of God. It's no, you do your thing, and I do my thing. But for your situation, it's two households. For your children, they're right now, they're lukewarm. They're unclean. So when they're with their mother, they're unclean. But with you, you can at least help them try to keep the commandments. Have, have clothes as an order with God's laws over your house. Understand, Kiri? But if the unbelieving depart, let him depart. A brother or a sister is not under bondage in such cases. But God have called us to peace. Now, if you and your wife, you and the, the, the mother of your children weren't married at that time, if she was an unbeliever and you all would depart, you won't be held under that bond of marriage anymore. You'll be called to peace because she's an unbeliever. The Lord tells you in the Bible, do not be unevenly yoked. So you got to understand, a uh, believer and a non-believer can't dwell in the same place. Give me Amos chapter 3. This is what the Lord says. Watch this. Amos chapter 3. And go to verse, uh, I think it's verse 3. The two, two Can two walk together unless they agree? Six. Amos 3 and 3. Three and, six. 3 and 6. You get that for me. And this is what the Bible is going, going into in 1 Corinthians. Let the unbelieving depart. Amos chapter 3 and verse 3. Read. This is the book of Amos chapter 3 and verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? See what the Bible is saying? The Lord our God said, can two walk together unless they be agreed? If you believe in the, if you understand and believe in the truth of the Bible, and she's following the doctrine of man, which is Christianity, the doctrine of the devil, you two can't walk together. Now your household is divided. So when your children are with her, they're unclean. When they're with you, they're clean. But right now, they're unclean. In the Lord's eyes, he called it lukewarm. He said, here, spew them out of his mouth. Because when they're their mother, they're dressed in monsters. So even though we know this truth, say if a brother comes to the school every Sabbath, but he only wears his fringes on the Sabbath. He may not know this truth and understand this truth, but he's lukewarm. The Lord calls that a double-minded man. is unstable in all his ways. And how you unstable in your ways? Because one minute you're wearing fringes, one minute you're not. One minute you're keeping the Sabbath, one minute you're not. One minute you're eating clean food, the next minute you're not eating clean food. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's why I'm telling you, brother, according to the Bible, it behoove you to be sure you get those fringes on your, on your clothes. Until then, wear those fringes, wear that same fringe shirt on top of your clothes or underneath your clothes every single day. And have and stay on your wife to be diligent and have her continually, continually make your shirt. Hey, baby, you got to fringe your shirt today. Fringe your shirt today. And just to make it through so you can stay on it. If you can't, if you can't get the Buon fringes too, uh, in a timely matter, do the poor man fringes. Get you a t-shirt. Make sure that ribbon of blue is up there and cut fringes in your t-shirt. You can go right to Walmart get you five t-shirts in a pack for like $15. That's five shirts right there, right off the back. She can put throw that ribbon of blue up there, whoop, whoop, whoop. Cut them slots in it, cut them fringes in that shirt, and you clean now. You understand what I mean? Use those things so you can keep God's laws because you don't want to be caught out here slipping. Right. Because the Lord said, in that day, if he see anybody in strange apparel, they'll be put to death. And that's not the only thing. That God put you there for the transgression of all His laws. That's the Lord said He put you there for. How, uh, how, uh, how, um, how's your diet? Diet is good. Your diet is good. All praise. Changed up on it. All praise to the Most High. All praise to the High Holy Days. High holy you keeping day. High Holy Days? You keeping the New Moon? Feast of Tabernacles coming up. We just had a New Moon just passed. Feast of Tabernacles coming up. We have a good old time. Right. The Lord gave us several days to celebrate His feast days. 
and we're gonna do it up. And we're brothers. That's we're right. We're gonna do it up out there, man. We're gonna, right. we're gonna keep the God's we're gonna keep God's high holy days with joyfulness and happiness, man. Give me Leviticus 18 and 30. Watch this. Give me Leviticus chapter 18, verse 30. A lot of our brothers and sisters, they know who they are. They know they're Israelites, but they're not keeping any laws. Knowing is one thing, but doing is another thing. Right. We have to do something to get somewhere where we want to be at. The day of atonement, we're supposed to keep that too? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. You, you, ha you have to keep the day of atonement. You, and you, will want, you should want to keep the day of atonement. Right. You have to keep the day of atonement. You should want to keep the day of atonement. You should want to keep all the high holidays of the Lord. Right. All of them. Where we at? 18 30. Yes, sir. Read that. This is the book of Leviticus, chapter 18, verse 30. Mm -hmm. Therefore shall ye keep my ordinance. The Lord said, therefore shall you keep my ordinance. I mean, keeping his dress codes, keeping his dietary laws, keeping his, his, um, his high holy days. Read. That ye commit not any one of these abominable, ab abominable customs. The Lord said, don't keep no abominable customs. What are those abominable customs going to? Dressing out of order, eating unclean foods, keeping the hella days. Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Easter, June 19th, anything that's not in this Bible that the Lord our God told us to keep in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, those things are an abominable custom. The Lord told us not to do that thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Which were committed before you, and that ye defile not yourselves therein. I am the Lord your God. The Lord our God said we keep those customs, we defile ourselves. Give me 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Because people gotta understand, you, you defiling your temple is not just the things you consume. It's not just the foods you consume, it's the, the things that you do that you bring into your spirit. That's what it's going into. 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. Watch this. It's the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 16. You know? know ye not that ye are the temple of God. Know you not that you are the temple of God, brother Reed? And that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. The scripture said that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. That's what the Lord is saying. What is the spirit of God doing? The spirit of God is this Bible right here. That's what the Bible, that's what the Bible is. In Hebrews, the Lord tells you, I come in the volume of the book. These law such commandments is God's spirit. Give me Revelation 19 and 10. These, these law such commandments, this Bible is God's spirit. This is testimony. This testimony is his spirit. This is what we got to in, in, instill inside of us. Can you read? Uh, read. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I, I am thy fellow servant and of thy brethren that have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. You, you hear what the Bible said? This Bible is the spirit of the Lord. So that's why in 1 Corinthians, go back to 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. He said the spirit of God should dwell in you. And that's the law, statute, and commandments that he give us. That's the law such commandments gives. Just get that again. First Corinthians 3 and 16. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, mm -hmm. and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. This holy Bible, the law such commandments dwell in you, brother, if you're keeping them. Read. If any man defile the temple of God, how do we defile our temple? Can you read? Him shall God destroy. Uh -huh. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. The law said. He would destroy you if you defile his temple. How you defile his temple? Taking on those abominable customs. Not dressing in order. Not keeping the high holidays. Eating unclean foods. The Lord said he would destroy your temple. Because it's no good. It's no use. If we, if we destroy our temple by in, in taking unclean things, the Lord said it's, because it's no use for you. How are you going to help the Lord and be out here teaching your people if you're unhealthy? Right. If you out here sit, if you laid up in the bed, got high blood pressure, high cholesterol, your feet hurt from gout, you fat, you, you, you're all bloated, you can't even stand out in the, in the sun for two hours to teach your people, to teach them the laws of God to come out of their nickels. What good are you? The Lord will destroy you. Oh, the, oh, he don't care. I'm, I look, Deuteronomy 26, so I'm just going through a disease on him that's not in his books. He don't care. Right. I can't use you. Your, to, your, your temple should be holy. It should be separate from, from everybody else's temple. It should be non-defiled. The Lord said he hated the abominations. Get that for me in Sirach 15. The Lord said he hated the abominations. That's thus said the Lord. That's why any abominable thing you destroy your temple with, God will destroy you. 15 and 13. Yes, sir. Read. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 15, verse 13. The Lord hated all abomination, and they that fear God love it not. The Lord that God said he hated the abominations. He hates that thing. So if you're taking an abominations, what does that make you? An abomination. And God said he hates all sinners. He hates all workers of iniquity. That's dust. We used to scream black power. 
while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.